All right. Hey, we're back. Episode 11? 11. Historiography on Castro. I kind of put it in with everything else with Hitler. I wanted to do it a little bit separately with Castro because I felt like it warranted it. So here we go. Um, Castro was a nationalist. This is definitely a part of historiography that I kind of apply to myself. I mentioned it in class a lot. Um, some historians, if you can remember them, uh, I, I listed right here, Hugh Thomas and Eric Williams, um, that he was a nationalist, right? And that he had no defined political philosophy. Um, he just wanted Cuba to be independent of the United States, right? And that transition to communism was not an ideological shift. It was a shift out of necessity in spite of the United States. Um Another school is that uh, Castro was a traditionalist, right? And this one is going to say that he's a populist leader that had a real true passion for his country and that he thought that his passion and leadership could elevate his country and that his speeches and rhetoric were not ideological ones. They weren't philosophical. They were rally cries to try and motivate his people forward. It was all Che. This is another one that I kind of unfortunately think that I prescribe to, not just to, not to sway you guys a lot, but I think that this one works very well with the fact that he was a nationalist, that um, Che is really the mind behind the revolution, right? He's the one who gave Castro his ideology. Um, he's the one who organized what was a very unorganized movement after the failure of Moncada Barracks and organized it into the M267 movement. Um, he's going to figure out how to incorporate religious practices in a non-religious system to appease the Cuban people. So um, it was all Che. It was all the U.S. is another prominent one that I think that some of you guys might incorporate into your writing that um, that you can't examine what's going on in Cuba and the policies by Castro in a vacuum, that you really have to understand the larger context of the Cold War to understand why things happen, why things happen to Cuba and Castro uh, uh, reacted the way that he did. And a lot of it has to do with the United States. Uh, lastly was Castro was a communist and this goes a little bit against the grain of some of the stuff that I said in class. Um, I think this is a little bit of a farther fetched historiographical historiography approach. Um, and I gave you kind of the three historians and how they break down that idea. One, uh, said that Castro's communism was purposefully hidden, um, so that he didn't, uh, 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 take sides early on in the revolution, right? If Castro was a communist early on, the United States probably would have intervened quicker and more than they did, and he might have never come to power, right? So that is legit. Um, he transitioned to communism out of necessity to get more support from the Soviet Union. Another one. Uh, and lastly, uh, he fell into communism once he saw how bad and how vast some of the problems in Cuba were, and communism was the best way to tackle some of those issues. So there are a couple of schools of history that you could bring into Fidel Castro, uh, also kind of maybe even bring into Cold War in the Americas if you wanted to, if you're one of my HL guys. So uh, that's that. We are done with our authoritarian states uh, revision series here. I'm going to continue this. I think I'm going to go to the Great Depression in uh, the Americas next. It's going to take a little bit of time, so expect episodes out next week. All right. Uh, again, I hope these are helping, and uh, I'll catch you all later.